Okay, I do believe this should be the only uh, switch from left to right that we have to do here. Uh, there will be, uh, there are a couple of more scenes here, this little intro sequence, but they're not quite as dramatic as, as those two, so. Here we have some strange people talking about some strange things. to be very familiar with each other at least. <laughs> she kinda zing you there, dude. I guess a little, I guess there's nothing wrong with a little friendly competition. So let's see what's going on here. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I uh, had, to, had to check something. Anyways. These frogs appear to have chased us over here. And yes, uh, if you can't tell, the, the left screen is the top screen, and the right screen is supposed to be the bottom screen when it's set up like this, so... So people seem to be disappearing from these strange little symbols in the sky. We have these frogs coming after us. <gasps> a pact. What is a pact? Well, she seems very strong about it, so... That was definitely a little strange. And here we have our first pin of the game. Our first of very many. And now we have our first real fight of the game. So basically, uh, this first pin we got is called Pyrokinesis, and essentially to activate it, to activate pins, you activate pins on the touch screen, and this one is just pretty much uh, drag any part of the screen, and you get a little trail of fire, you can roll it around anywhere you like, and, uh, but we want to roast, some, uh, roast a little bit of froggy, so that's pretty much the only use we have for it right now. And uh, as you may have noticed, uh, pins have to boot. As you can see, it has to fill up on the top left there. Uh, not every pin uh, has an initial boot time. Some of them do, and then when you run out of it, uh, you have to wait for it to refill before you can use it again, like so. So, who's next? Fairly simple. And with that, we obtain Pyrokinesis, our very first pin of the game. And you, you were, as you, if you haven't been able to notice, we're getting these little book things. They're basically tutorials uh, you can access in the menu if you forget how to play the game, or if you want to show your friend or whatever. So, <laughs> Sykes, noise packs. This girl uh, definitely keeps spouting a lot of turns we don't know anything about. And uh, if you're a little bit confused here, uh, pretty much this, this whole beginning sequence is you're supposed to be, like they're supposed to just kind of throw you into the action, so... 
you're not really supposed to know what's going on, so. All gone. No more uh, frogs attacking us at the moment, apparently because of this pact that we now have with this random girl. Yeah, so what are noise? Uh, uh, if you, you probably can figure that out. Those are the names of the monsters. And pins all have psychs. Uh, the pin for pyrokinesis is the fire that we saw. And here we have Shiki Misaki. She's, uh, she's going to be our partner character for the game, our female lead. Uh, no, I'm not quite sure what's going on with her hips there. Uh, she would not look out of place in uh, Planescape 2. I call this whack. I love the writing in this game. This game is has some of the best writing that I believe in, in any game ever. Here we have uh, the Reaper's game, Seven Days Long. What is the Reaper's game? But he doesn't seem really too concerned about this, and uh, this girl just kind of uh, seems. And, and here we have our first uh, setting, the setting of a uh, name, uh, the name drop of the setting. Uh, we're in Shibuya, which is a district of Tokyo, Japan, for those who are not aware. And uh, we're going to be spinning the game here. And uh, here we have our, I guess, our first little instance of actually being able to walk around. It's not really anything that we can do right now, uh, but uh, for the most part, you just uh, you can move with either the uh, the D-pad or with the touch screen. Uh, you can sort of move yourself around. So we want to go back to where we started, which is over here at the Scramble Crossing. And I'll go over some of these uh, menu icons on the on the right here as we go. So. Why are you making yourself so hard to follow? Uh, that's a bit of a strange, uh, strange way to word things. Which, uh, she seems awfully calm about uh, a statement saying that uh, they're trapped in Shibuya. We're not playing any games here, Shiki. I'm uh, not really sure what you're talking about. They'll erase us? So that's what happened to those people from before. Their strange symbols got them and they just kinda disappeared. And uh, the game is going, you're pretty much never going to get a strict definition for what being erased means until the, the very, very late game. But um, uh, essentially, it's kind of what it sounds like. Uh, basically, your soul uh, in the current form that it is in is gone, is erased and dispersed. So essentially, you cease to exist in your current form. Yeah, I don't remember signing up for any kind of uh, playing any sort of game. Is that what that thing is? So the pin at the bottom right is a player pin. And uh, this girl also has a timer on her hand. Steadily counting down, we are now down to 20 minutes. So we've spent roughly 40 minutes between the beginning at least in game time. And apparently these things mark us as part of this Reaper's game. Oh. 10-4. 10-4, you may recall from that message, that's the place that these Reapers want us to go to. Apparently, this girl has the same message. Uh, 
I don't know, dude. I mean, this, uh, yeah, you've been saying some pretty trippy stuff. Uh, you might wanna, you might wanna pay attention. It's not every day that frogs attack you in the street and you kill them with fire. So it seems we're just gonna go along with things now, so... And here we have the name dropping of our hero. This is Neku. Neku Sakuraba. That is his name, the name of our main character. Our rather, uh, angry, bitter main character. <laughs> he doesn't seem too fond of his name. But I gotta agree, it's a, it is a little cute, so... Alright, so, uh, to go to where we need to go, and this is what I meant by my computer doesn't seem to like emulating this game, so... Uh, we're supposed to go north, but instead we're going to defy the game and try to go right. Uh, screw this, we're just, we're just leaving. We don't actually believe any of this. Uh, she did say that before, what does she mean we can't leave? I mean, we can do whatever we want, right? <sighs> so yes, uh, we really uh, cannot actually leave uh, Shibuya. They are, they are, they cannot leave here. Which is, it's kind of strange that I put this scene here, because that's, like, this area that I just tried to go into is actually a real area you go to later in the game. Whereas, if you try to go south, you never get to go south. So, or like, downwards from this area. So. Uh, but yes, it seems that whatever's going on here, uh, we cannot leave Shibuya, Japan. And uh, in Tuwewi, as you may have heard, uh, the plot walls are very literal. Uh, they're literally just, you can't go somewhere, there are these invisible walls that stop you from going there. So. And they are apparently painful. Uh, but this is the way to 10 4, so let's, uh, let's go along with our strange girl companion, Shiki. Except, there's another wall here. But if this is the way and we can't get through, what does that mean? That's a little creepy. Random hooded guy. I don't know, what what are we gonna do? Wait. And now it's gone. So whatever happened. Yeah, I guess so. Uh don't look a gift horse in the mouth, I guess, as they say. <laughs> Except now that guy's gone. Well, whatever. Let's just uh, let's just get on with this, I guess. And now we can go through here properly to ten four. <gasps> and with that, our uh, our hand clocks seem to have vanished. Reaper, huh? Uh, that's a little bit of a bold proclamation that you're making there. But this Reaper has summoned some more of these frog monsters. Noise, as they are called. Focus your thoughts on me. Well, I guess if we have to. So now we have the introduction of uh, a rather infamous portion of the game. Uh, chances are, if you have heard anything about Twoey, uh somebody probably mentioned that uh, the, the battle system is a little... It takes a while to get used to. 
And uh, the reason why, as we're about to get uh, into here, is you have to play on the top screen and the bottom screen at the same time. Uh, while you control Neku on the bottom screen, completely with the touch screen, uh, you also control Shiki at the top screen with the directional buttons on your control pad. Um, essentially, as the tutorial says there, uh, you press left and right to have Shiki attack in that direction, or if you're left-handed, you can use the face buttons. And uh, essentially, you hit the buttons in a sort of combo map, and uh, I'll show you that. Uh, you don't. You're not necessarily forced to do that um, or to do any of this. If you if you simply don't do anything uh, for a few seconds, then the, an AI will control your partner for you. Uh, but it's pretty. You want to. Uh, it's much more efficient to do so yourself. So because this is an intro sequence, I'm mostly just gonna show. I could be fighting with Neku as well, but I'm trying to show. Trying to get used to this. So uh, that, that's some beginning combat. You cannot move Shiki. Uh, she can only stay in one place, and you sort of uh, just attack around her, attack enemies around her. She does have invincibility frames, though, at the end of her combos. So uh, if you you can milk those to avoid damage. So. And uh, if you haven't noticed, we don't seem to have uh, any, any HP yet. You can't actually die uh, during this intro sequence. So this is very much meant to uh, kind of get you used to the game. Uh, but now, uh, you may have noticed it happened in that fight. Uh, we're going to get introduced to another game mechanic, and that is the Light Puck. And um, essentially, um, well, I should probably talk about noise first. Uh, when you're fighting uh, two different... Or, when you're fighting more than one noise, in that fight there's only one, and this one there's now two. Uh, noise exists simultaneously uh, in two different places, but there's still the same noise. So, like, even though the two frogs aren't in the same place, if I kill one on one screen, you see it disappeared on Neku's screen because they are uh, they have this, a single HP source. And another thing is, I'm actually going to pause so the AI doesn't kill the the other enemy for me. You may have noticed uh, the there's another there's another mechanic called the light puck. Um, essentially, uh, when a character begins a combo or if it finishes a whole full combo, then uh, a puck of, a green puck of light will pass from one of them to the other character. And when one character has a light puck, if that character then does a combo. Uh, the final hit of the combo gets a damage multiplier to it, and then the light puck is passed on again to the next character, and then if that character does a combo, the multiplier gets bigger and passes to the other character. So essentially, um, it is benefiting you to go back and forth uh, between characters, to do a combo with one character, and then a combo with the other character, and then a combo with the other character, and uh, you will get a, an ever-stacking multiplier onto your damage. Uh, what constitutes a combo with Neku is uh, somewhat vague. I didn't really have a chance to show it off there, but we'll get plenty of others. Uh, but essentially, just attacking Neku, you'll get the hang of it. It's not very hard, so. And here we have some tutorials for that, so. Uh, if you do have any questions about the game, uh, feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll, I don't mind asking. I know this can be a bit uh, confusing at first, so. And here we have uh, what looks like a bigger symbol, so. Hey, Stalker. Well, okay. This is, uh, this is a big one, apparently. And also a new enemy. Are these giant bear monsters. So you see, I just did a combo with Shiki. Now the puck is Neku. Got flame for a little bit. You see that the last hit does more damage. Like so. And it keeps getting higher as I go. See, now it's 2.5, 2.7, and I uh, realistically don't actually want to stop attacking between combos, I'm just sort of doing it. I'm going to go ahead and let my pin reboot. Uh, the max multiplier that you can get to is uh, 5, 5 times damage, and uh, I will show exactly, uh, there is something that affects your multiplier, and for that we have a book and we have a 500 yen pin. I'll explain what those do. And we get a Scarletite. This is a key item. Um, I'm going to talk about these. Uh, basically, um, in Twoey does have a sort of New Game Plus functions uh, where you can go back and play, um, essentially, because the game is divided into chapters. Uh, essentially, once you finish the game, you can go back and play uh, certain chapters over again. 
uh, but on your very first playthrough, like we're doing now, uh, you get these sort of uh, items whenever you do certain story events. And one of them is this uh, Scarletite, as you can read from the description there, uh, certain shop quest. Like you trade this item in for item crucial to character growth. Uh, you're only going to get uh, a select few of these through the game, um, at least the story. Uh, you can get your own in the post game, uh, but it can be not difficult per se, but it can. You can get stuck. Well, let me put it that way. So it, it is somewhat wise to know how to spend your Scarletites in advance, and uh, we'll talk about that more later. But for now, we seem to have survived these noise attacks, so... But apparently, uh, day one is supposed to be pretty easy, and uh, we almost died a couple of times today, so... Six more days of this Strange Reapers game. But what is going on here? We still don't really even know, but I know one thing for sure, uh, Getting erased does not look very pleasant. It looks like a fate that we'd very much like to avoid. We're trapped here in this district of Japan with all these strange threats around us. What is going on? And with that, we are going to conclude the first day of the game. So, Reaper's Game, first day, chapter closed. And it's going to take us to the save screen right quick. Uh, this is uh, pretty basic, I feel. Uh, on the left here, you have uh, basically what, what's going to be our, our main menu, where you can see. Uh, you, you have uh, points, uh, e ESP, -er, or as I like to call it, Esper, just because the Final Fantasy VI reference. It's pretty cool. You see what I'm talking about. Uh, you have some little uh, stats here on the on the end here. You, you could see your equipment and uh, your setups had we had them and um, down here on, on the right screen, you just it's your save screen, you click this button and just save. And you can see basically where you left off. So, And with that, we're going to conclude. So next video, we're going to go with the second day.